guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show. We give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today is Mark Ellis. Well, welcome one and all to a fantastic <laughs> episode of the greatest movie news show in the entire galaxy. And we, we have a very special announcement to make today. It is somebody's birthday on this panel. Oh. And that somebody <laughs> is our own Ashley Mova. And How I about can't it? see, I'm losing Happy my vision. Birthday. I'm getting older, I'm losing my vision. <laughs> it's, so. And Ashley, <laughs> On behalf of everybody else here at Collider, we want to welcome you to that exclusive club whose Don't initials are OAF, old as... Okay, so <laughs> we have an amazing show oh for you guys gosh. today. Lots of stuff to get to. Ashley, who's Brilliant. joining us on this birthday edition? Also, here is John Schnapp. Hey, what's up? I'm totally way older than Ashley. She, what, did you just turn like 23 or something? Something little, like that. Little, little yeah. baby. She was like, I'm so old. I was like, shut up. <laughs> just shut up about how old you are. What the hell is wrong with these youngsters? Also these here, youngsters. John Roca. <laughs> yeah, I don't talk about my age, but hey, welcome. Back. I'm glad to be on this show. We'll see where this goes. I mean, this is... Uh, 20, the 20s are tough, I know. Those are tough they ages. Really are. They really are. <laughs> Once I'm you start having your birthday celebration at Applebee's and you make the wait staff <laughs> come out and sing yeah. you, that's when you know it's going down. Where's hill. my cupcake? Enjoy your quesadilla explosion. <laughs> that's at Chili's. Um, we have a couple <laughs> announcements to make before we get to all the exciting rundown we have. First of all, if you guys notice the graphics today, our man Dennis Zeng took over the graphics department today Ooh. because our boy Ray, he's dealing with a family issue right now. We wish him and the Aura Clan all the best and hope that everybody gets well soon. Uh, so in the meantime, Dennis did the graphics. He wants everybody to know that the last time Dennis did graphics, it was on a Univac way back in 1984. <laughs> so if right. you see something that look a little wonky today, just know us behind the scenes are scrambling around, but we made an effort to put the show together for you guys today. I think Mar Marky used a Commodore 64 with the very first like alpha <laughs> beta version of Photoshop. It's called Photo.01. <laughs> there's there's, there's yeah. photographic evidence of Dennis and Matthew Broder hacking into a government net <laughs> frame. <laughs> Would you like back. to play a game, Dennis? <laughs> Dennis. Dennis. <laughs> and then they created a woman in weird science, and we all had a lot of fun. Hello. Uh, speaking Whoa. of fun, there is some breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you guys were at Collider.com this morning, our crack team of writers, led by Frosty Weintraub, had a bunch of cool Captain America Civil War scoops. The biggest one being that we got some brand new posters. So we're going to kick off the show mm. by revealing these to you right now. Now, you obviously, you're going to see Cap there. You're going to see his boy, Bucky. And who's that? Oh, my God. That's the guy from Admission. It's also Paul Rudd from Ant. <laughs> Man, look at these posters. This is clearly Team Cap going against what is going to be Team Stark. We also get to see Falcon, Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye. And, oh, my God, is that Scarlet Witch, ladies and gentlemen? So a lot of cool things to take a look at. Now, boys, I want to get to you first, Roka. Uh, first of all, welcome okay. to the show. Glad to have you. Thank you, um, uh, You're dressed in blue, which is Ashley's mood right now because That's she's right. gotten so old overnight. That's right. What do you think about these posters? You look like you are you would be on Team Captain America. Are these ones getting your goat? Oh, absolutely, I think they look fantastic. I like the idea of the shield in the background to let you know what side they're on. I like the profile. Profiles are always good shots if they do them correctly, and it looks like each one of them is really serious about whatever's happening right in front of them. Uh, I think it's a great way to announce the team and the fact that they only uh, released the ones for Team Captain America today, and they might, who knows if they'll release the ones for Iron Man tomorrow. So I like that idea that they're giving you already the sides of each and then giving them a certain kind of importance. And it was nice to see Ant-Man on there and get Paul, Paul Rudd a little love totally. for that for that film that was really good. So. That's right. We're hoping to see Team Iron Man tomorrow. Schnepp, in the meantime, these get you all sweaty? Uh, I'm not a team side face is what I'm calling these posters. Like, I, you know, no, it doesn't. It's just a bunch of weird dudes like looking off a couple chicks looking off like side face. And I guess tomorrow team uh, Iron Man will be the side face the other way. Oh, yeah. Ooh. It's cool, whatever. I, don't, I, I would never buy them like, I got all six people facing this way and all six people facing that way, and then have the center one with just Cap and Iron Man fighting. I would just get the Cap and Iron Man fighting. The side face thing is cool to look at. Look, they're all serious, and they're all on one side. The side face thing is interesting now, but look, you got to think about it. If not everybody makes it out of this movie alive, it might be the last poster that character <laughs> got before they bit it in this incredible universe. So whether it's somebody as big as Captain America or it's a smaller character, it, you, congrats on being on a poster in a movie theater. It might be the last time you get one. Then it'd be Team Cryface. 
<laughs> it would be Team Weepy Weep, which nobody wants to see. Okay, with all those posters and excitement out of the way, Ashley, what's our first official story? Well, it's Monday, which means it's time for the weekend box office report brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. Disney's new animated feature, Zootopia, easily took first place this weekend <laughs> with a reported $73.7 million, representing the best March debut ever for an animated movie. London has fallen open in the number two spot with $21.7 million. Deadpool finally relinquishes hold onto the number one spot, dropping to number three with $16.4 million. The weekend's other wide release, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, took the number four spot with $7.6 million, and at number five, Gods of Egypt took in $5 million. Mark, your thoughts on this weekend's box office report? Well, well, congratulations, Deadpool. You had a hell of a run at the top, and we're all proud to have known you. Now Zootopia coming in. It, you got expected a kid's movie. It's animated that adults seem to like as well. is going to be the top dog. $73 million dollars that's impressive i didn't realize it was breaking a march record for animation yeah. but all deserved too i saw zootopia and thought it was really really well done um you look at london has fallen that's you know i it's it's not a it's not a great movie it's a dumb action film that you can have fun watching so i'm glad to see it at least get over the 20 million dollar hump and then you look at deadpool and whiskey tango foxtrot and gods of egypt so i guess the lesson here kids is if your movie bombs both with critics and audiences and you take to facebook to complain about it it's not going to help the box office draw a mere five million dollars for a movie that cost over 140 million dollars to make that is not a win uh roca you yeah. see these numbers i don't know if you got a chance to check zootopia or london has fallen out yeah what stands out to you about this weekend well i love i, I saw zootopia on saturday i thought it was great it's it's a perfect film that that mixes. It's almost got the Pixar thing where it mixes the child stuff and the adult stuff. There's enough there for both sides, and I think that's why it beat the Frozen uh, numbers because it just by by almost seven million because it's got enough to offer for both sides. So it repeat viewing makes sense. Uh, I haven't seen London's Fallen. I did like Olympus is Fallen. Or is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Olympus is Fallen. See, I did Olympus like that. fell, and then that was like a tiny home yeah. invasion, and now we have all of London falling. <laughs> right, exactly. With some terrible CG from the trailer from what I saw in the trailer. <laughs> uh, but like what's interesting about this thing is that it, it, it actually made nine million less than Olympus has fallen. Mm -hmm. So my reaction when I saw there was a trailer for this was, wait, they made a sequel to this? So it seems like I'm not the only one who felt that way because it, it obviously fell nine million short of what it could have been. And I don't think the other films affected it. Obviously, Gods of Egypt didn't, which... Gods of Egypt did ugh. not affect much of anything. Yeah. Schnepp, uh, there's a lot of talking animals. They're number one. Does that sit well with you? It sits really well with me. I haven't seen it yet, but I cannot wait to see Zootopia. I just was very busy this weekend. Happily... Other people were not, and the 73 million is quite a lot of money. That is way more than I thought it would make an opening weekend, which is great. Zootopia, London Fallen, you saw it. Was it like a Die Hard 5, or was it like a Die Hard <laughs> oh, yeah. 2? It was not a Die Hard 5. Was it like There's Die Hard 2? films. I would say it's more like Die Hard 2 is great in my book as well. I'd say it's between Die Hard 2 and Die Hard 4. It's there like somewhere mm. in between that where you can enjoy it, but you got to really turn your brain off. There's some great one liners. What I love about London is Fallen is that the two leads do not not take the movie seriously at all but the movie around it takes itself so seriously that you can have fun laughing at it and then also enjoying some of the action scenes i agree oh, with cool. you the, the the sprawling cgi was like gods of egypt level but mm -hmm. once you get in close some of those combat things were pretty good does morgan freeman have like a running away from exploding stuff scene well i can't give away the movie just tell me that <laughs> if you want to see morgan freeman run away from explosions you got a better chance with london has fallen than you do with awesome. Zootopia. <laughs> deadpool had a legendary run i mean yeah. it was number one for what four weeks yeah. in a row and yeah. it made so much more money than we thought even looking at this take 16 million dollars is not anything to scoff at no, yeah. do you think we're going to see a movie that's an r-rated comic book film like that come across our board again and make that much money yeah deadpool 2 <laughs> <laughs> or, or x-force any of the ones that have oh, deadpool in it right. you're going to see that kind of money come back um i think it just crossed the 300 million domestic here yeah. like mm -hmm. this weekend too so yeah it's a money machine right now and uh, you know i think that's what you know uh, Fox hasn't announced what those mystery Marvel movies are going to be, yeah. but you know they're going to play it safe, I think, and not actually make that announcement until after X Men Apocalypse comes out. Right. Because I think if X Men Apocalypse does those kinds of numbers that they wanted to, then they'll be like the sequel to X Men will be in one of those spots, and Deadpool Two will be in the other spot. Yeah. You know, it'll just make sense. Yeah, I mean now, and we're in the point where we're kind of gearing up to go see Batman v Superman. It's a mere weeks away now, kids. And before we get to that, there's there there's sports movies that have disappointed me with how well they did. I thought that. 
that Wraith should have been at least, I don't know if the movie was good. I didn't get a chance to check it out. Mm -hmm. I thought it'd make more of a splash than it did. And Eddie the Eagle, it made $3 million this weekend, and it's only at $10 million total. Wow. You'd think more people would want to go see a movie with Hugh Jackman in it, regardless of what the plot is. And it yeah. seemed like a nice, uplifting tale. Triple Nine is the other one that just, it's fallen off the radar so quickly. It was number 11 at the box office this weekend. That's a bummer to me. I think y'all should check it out. It's got more of a grit feel to it than London has fallen. But if you want to see an action movie, that's not a bad choice to make. Uh, Ashley, what's our next topic? Now that Spider-Man is all situated for his reboot in Marvel's Captain America Civil War, Sony is back to planning their own spinoffs again. According to a report from The Hollywood Reporter, the studio is now planning a new Venom movie that will be scripted by Dante Harbour. The movie will revolve around the symbiotic Spider-Man villain. However, it will not be connected to the upcoming standalone Spider-Man film and therefore will not be connected to the Marvel Universe. Amazing Spider-Man producers Avi Arad and Matt Tolmack are producing Venom, which is intended to launch a franchise of its own. Schnapp, what do you think about a standalone Venom movie? Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> the word, the name, the two names, Avi Arad. Just immediately, I just can't help it. Me and Mark have been like slaving away <laughs> writing this script. It's called Aunt May, Mayday. The new rebellion <laughs> times are changing. It's, we're, I don't know. We're, I don't know if we're going to keep all of it. It's a working title. It's we want to get it all in there. Yeah, we, we really want to get a lot of stuff in there. Going to have a great poster yeah. with Aunt May just staring this way. Get yeah. a profile of Aunt May. So Aunt May side face is, I think. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of variant covers. Just a lot. It's a lot of work that we've been putting into but it. But is it a smart move to make the Venom movie before they make our Aunt May movie? What is Venom bringing to the table here, especially <laughs> yeah. in a standalone universe where he's not even hanging with Spider-Man? I think if Avi smokes enough of that special. <laughs> Yikes. Kush that he's on, <laughs> the purple one with the weird okay. yellow veins in it. Uh, what, that he'll come up with a Kush? yeah. That that he'll come up with the best Venom movie possible, and I think that would be this one that has nothing to do with the Spider-Man universe. Mm. I would go with like the alternate, like almost like the DC Elseworlds that Marvel has been doing, where you have Venom Noir. I don't, I can't remember exactly mm. what the full title is, but he's almost like a Punisher with Venom's powers. Yeah. So I kind of would like to see that approach and have no connection at all to Peter Parker or anything that has anything to do with the Marvel uh, Spider-Man universe. Yeah. I think that would be the way to go. I mean, Venom is so, is so connected to Spider-Man. He's using the symbiote suit that Spider-Man got from Secret Wars. Get your knowledge straight. Um, <laughs> come on. Yeah. That's what I'd say about Venom. If he's not connected to Spider-Man, then make him totally not connected. And you can have a really cool awesome film a lot of just the regular general public only know about venom only because of spider-man 3 and or the animated series they're not reading these comics so right. i think that kind of thing it's like you have a chance to rebrand the character venom in a brand new way so that's what i would i would hope they're doing you know it was a total waste of venom in spider-man 3 it went through no fault of the casting they had my doppelganger topher grace play the guy at the end he was the eddie brock venom and we just it was it felt like shoehorned into that movie it felt like the studio said hey you got to put another cool looking character in here and it was a bummer because Venom is such an interesting complex character deserves his own movie I don't know about series of movies because I haven't seen the first one yet and you're dealing with Sony we're not dealing with Marvel in that cinematic universe because as they made a point of saying this is not going to be a part of that nor the Spider-Man standalones that are going to be happening at Sony under Marvel's uh, you know co-production so Roca yep. do you think going forward they're going to make a Venom movie and then say okay now you guys probably want this dog in all your other fights that you're making or do you think that they they really want to stay independent with this Venom franchise. Well, this is an interesting thing with the Sony Studios because they're doing that with Ghostbusters too, where they're saying the Ghostbusters is not in the same universe as the original Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. So this this concept, this I don't know if it's a thing coming down from the executives saying, yeah, we just want to make these things like their own separate universes and then we'll deal with tying them in later. I would be surprised if they kept going down this path because you're really shutting yourself off from so much more potential storylines, potential villains, potential heroes popping up. I mean, I don't know how you do a Venom movie and not mention Spider-Man and John you make a great reference with Secret Wars that's where it was it was off that planet in and, and it was supposedly this great thing for him and it turned evil on him and the only thing I could see possibly about this Venom movie that could be interesting is if they find a way to put carnage in it mm -hmm. if they find a way to create that as the villain but then you're like are you dealing with an Eddie Brock Venom or are you dealing with Flash Thompson who's the Venom now and so what are we what are we dealing with and then how many are there going to be other side characters from the Spider-Man universe that get to come in that aren't necessarily owned by any other studio does it, do we have an Aunt May appearance? Do we have an MJ appearance? Who knows what, what universe they're going to put him in and what characters. See, when you say all that, I instantly my stomach starts to turn. That's what like I, I think it's horrible, a horrible yeah. idea. So that's why I would be pushing for, look, if you're going to do a Venom standalone, it has nothing to do with Spider-Man. Have it about some astronaut who's like, 
you know, that's you get right. to sort of take a little bit from Spider Man Three. It's from an, it's an alien thing, and you get the black ooze, and yep. you get the red ooze. And right. the black ooze goes on to a dude who's like kind of a criminal, but ends up being the cool guy, the yeah. anti hero. And the red ooze becomes carnage. And there you have your two, your, yeah. your two, it like seems your logical. typical Marvel film where you have right. I'm an Iron Man and I'm fighting an evil Iron Man, or right. I'm an Ant Man, I'm fighting a tinier Ant Man. Right. Where you have those kinds of the Hulk fighting another Hulk. It's like. Those kinds of work, those work for their origin stories. I think that could be a good way to introduce Venom without having any tie to Spider-Man. That's right. the only way I'd see Well, look, it. it's one thing for us sophisticated gentlemen who have spent years lurking outside of comic book shops <laughs> talking about whether Venom would be cool or what storyline to have. But, Roka, I'll throw it to you first. Guilty, guilty. Do yeah. you think that a Venom standalone movie is going to appeal to a wide enough audience to where you're going to get a bang for your buck? I think it all depends on the trailer. And we've seen so many times how uh, these, like, people didn't think Guardians was going to work. People didn't think Deadpool was going to work until those that footage got released. It's all about the footage, and it's all about the director and, and the writer. Uh, they seem to have a decent writer. We'll see what happens with the director. And, and I think it all depends on the trailer. Look, once again, to reference Ghostbusters, look how people react to that trailer. It's all about the trailer. If they do a real awesome trailer i think people will give it a shot i mean sony doesn't have necessarily the best track record mm -hmm. but people want to see this i don't think in any way that we have come to this superhero saturation point what right. we want is good movies it's irrelevant oh, people we're here to stay we're all alive and it just keeps going generation to generation coming to see these movies so to me it's like if you shoot it correctly you have the right vibe and you do something original i think people will come at least give it a shot snap fans gonna line up to see venom opening weekend yeah i agree with roca saying i think if you approach it with an action horror genre firmly in place because that's what Venom yep. sounds like to me especially without Spider-Man yep. you have a horror villain as your main hero anti-hero you have to supply him with enough creatures that he has to fight and you have to shoot it really well and make it look cool and also have enough action in it that it supplies everything that a Venom movie is promising to people who've read Venom and then just the off the street person what the hell is this Venom thing right. scare the hell out of him with the trailer have some really cool action scenes I think then you've got a good hook to see the rest of the film. Yeah, and, and I like when art gets cocky, and I like when you have a franchise that's like, no, we don't need to have Spider-Man in here just to sell our movie, because whatever you want to say about Deadpool, and look, you did get to see Shades of X-Men yeah. in that trailer, because you saw Colossus hanging out, but in my opinion, that's not why people lined up to see Deadpool weekend it was all the viral marketing all the excitement about that character that that fans wanted to know more of you can be able to do the same thing with venom if it's done correctly okay well it's time for that point in the show we like to call buy or sell ashley is going to give us a premise and we're going to say whether we buy it or sell it no actual cash is involved unless you're roca who's the newer guy so you do have to pay us money <laughs> Son of a... all right after the announcement of a standalone venom movie sony looked to combine two of their most popular franchises into one giant giant event movie. According to a report from Variety, Sony will cross over their 21 Jump Street franchise with their Men in Black franchise, tapping the Muppets director James Bobbin to take the helm. Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum will reprise their Jump Street roles, with production targeting a start date in June. The report, however, mentions that Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones will not be appearing in the movie, with insiders speculating that the crossover will serve as a reboot to the franchise, with an opportunity to cast two young up-and-comers as the new Men in Black. Roka Byers sell a Men in Black 21 Jump Street crossover. Okay, this is an interesting position for me to be in because when it was first announced through in the Sony email hack or rumored or whatever, I was excited. I thought it was a ballsy thing to do to take two existing franchises and try to combine them. That's that's almost never done, uh, and so it would have been interesting to see how they play this out. I'm excited because I love the I love the 21 Jump Street uh, franchise. I, I'm so surprised at how funny and inventive those guys have been. The writing has been from Lord and Miller and the direction. Obviously, they seem to they seem to understand how to make this. This, this franchise work and make it funnier. My only trepidation, my only worry is the fact that we're not going to have uh, Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith coming back. Once again, Will Smith not returning to another uh, property that he, like Independence Day, that he was a big part of. And so that's kind of a little bit of a downer. So I'm buying it for now because if they cast it correctly with some young up-and-comers, I'm still enough excited, but I have a lot of worry that uh, they'll cast the wrong up-and-comers, and without even a cameo from Will Smith or Tommy Lee, it kind of takes a little bit of the magic away from me. Yeah, I, I was tossed in a turn about whether to buy or sell this thing all night long, and the decision I arrived at is that I can buy it for now simply because I'm going to look at the worst-case scenario. Like, the worst-case scenario, right, Men, Men in Black 3, if, if you liked it out there... Uh, 
Congratulations. Mm -hmm. I hated mm -hmm. Men in Black 3. Wow. I thought it was the death of a franchise, as particularly with somebody as great as Will Smith and somebody as talented as Tommy Lee Jones. To see all that great chemistry that was in the first movie just come all crashing down into nothingness at the end of that film really bummed me out. And I'm like, okay, well, no more Men in Black. 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street, those movies are hysterical, mm -hmm. but where do you go from there? Do you just keep making more of the same thing, or do you take a chance and cross it over with aliens and all this stuff? Because that worst case scenario is that in the next movie, if this one bombs the next standalone 24 Jump Street yeah. movie, you just make fun of the fact that you completely ruined a franchise mm -hmm. when you can just come back and just Deadpool it, just make fun of what you did before. So there isn't really that big of a downside. You could make a horrible movie, but the upside is that you can have a new Men in Black franchise. Clearly, Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith want nothing mm. to do with this thing anymore, and you can't really <laughs> blame them. So if you reboot that, that's such a rich storyline. It's got so much potential where you have these guys investigating all these weird alien things going on. And if you recruit the gang, Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill from 21 Jump Street, it sounds like it could be hilarious. It sounds weird. And I'm not ready to buy tickets opening weekend, but I do think it's intriguing enough to where I can give it a buy today. How about you? Yeah, you know, I'm in the same camp as you a little <laughs> flip though like i absolutely hated men in black three mm -hmm. it's a really bad film it's a horrible movie. God, I, I, okay. um <laughs> sorry roca i love uh, garbage is garbage two you know, was like, bad they they were, like, they, they they were, liked three a lot they literally oh, like sleepwalking through like. the role even when they were on those little roundy yeah. roll things of, like what? will smith was like i guess i'm on a green screen is none of it felt like they gave a fuck you didn't but, like the uh, denouement at the end with the, nothing the, the, yeah he no. was taking care of the concourse dude they wasted him anyway um but I love 21 Jump Street and I love 22 Jump Street. I think that franchise is so refreshing and fun and new. And what they did with a TV show, the concept and the premise yeah. of a TV show, and to have these two guys, Jonah Hill and uh, Channing Tatum, in it. Channing Tatum is hilarious. Jonah Hill's funny. Those guys, both of those films are great. And when I first heard that I read those Sony hacks, it's just like everybody yeah. else, where I was like, what kind of crack are they smoking? What is wrong with people? <laughs> Three's Company and Dallas. I was like, I started thinking of a whole bunch of weird ways to, what, like $6 million man and the fall guy, Lee Majors oh, fighting himself. I mean, oh. there were so many. I just started thinking of like a, a F Troop one. and Gilligan's Island again, again. Just come up with a million different weird variations. But then the more I thought about it, I started to warm up to the fact that, look, you're absolutely right. 23 Jump Street, I'm going to see. They already get, they have my money. I don't even care what it is. Even if they were like, it's the worst, strangest failure of all. I'm still seeing it because based on the popularity and the premise and the fun that I had from those first two, I'm giving the third one a chance just because I like mm -hmm. those first two. I'm like, maybe they're trying, maybe no one else understood it except I'll understand it. You know, you, you're ready to take that plunge. Add Men in Black. I was like, I don't know. That just sounds insane and stupid. And why are you? Are they going to become Men in Black? I guess that's the only way that they could, you know, yes. force them oh, to become yeah. the Men in Black. Have the new, uh, mm -hmm. the new agents, Agent K, Agent J, Agent yeah. L, whatever their whatever letter they are. You can slowly introduce a new team of Men in Black mm -hmm. to spin off, but make these guys the new, you know, they're like, they're the uh, Will Smiths, mm -hmm. both of them, Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill. I mean, that makes sense, or however they're gonna do it, as long as they keep the humor. I mean, Men in Black is funny, but not like funny, like 21 or 22 Jump Street funny. So right. I would like to, they gotta bring Ice Cube back. I, I wanna see everybody who's from the first two movies back in this movie, and then I don't really care about anybody from Men in Black, because to me, that's done. So if they're gonna reboot Men in Black, they have to completely re do a, a soft reboot within this franchise. I'd like it to not even be called like Men in Black. I hope it's 23 Jump Street then under, you know, something like they're fighting aliens or something, you know, something like not totally like meets Men in Black. That's just goofy and stupid. Like you can have Men in Black in there and make it a, a prequel, like little Slido with like a soft pilot instep to the Men in Black movie. You know, I'm, I buy it. I mean, dude, you, you pitched a lot <laughs> of that. programs. You pitched a lot of crossovers I mean, just now. Seriously. I just want to see the episode of Dallas where they shoot Mr. Furley. That's the one that I'm really hoping to check out. Look, we have to look at, it's very rare when you get a franchise they can do whatever it wants and retcon itself and the fans are going to be okay with it but that's what you get with the jump streets it's like if this movie's terrible the first trailer for 24 jump street all it's going to say is hey we screwed up 
So <laughs> we're back, and we're back on you know South Beach or whatever, just solving crimes with Ice Cube. That's all you need to do. Men in Black. If this movie's great, that's awesome. If the movie sucks, it's just as dead as it was after Men in Black Three. We're not gonna put Roke on the spot and make him defend why he loved Men in Black Three <laughs> so, so very many reasons. Much. I'm so just many gonna reasons. ask you. I'm gonna put the Venom question to you real no. quick. Our audience is gonna want to line up to see because they've loved the first two 21 Jump Streets. Mm -hmm. Are they gonna love that going into a Men in Black universe? I think the, in this case, I think as I mentioned earlier, I think it's all about the cast for who they're going to bring in Men in Black. I mean, in my mind already, because it's default, you jump to Michael B. Jordan. Mm. Certainly a possibility. He hasn't done a lot of comedy. It might be fun. He certainly could do action. So it's like, okay, can we play with that possibility and redeem him from Fantastic Four? Certainly you could put him in there. Are they going to go back in time? Are there going to be new agents? Right. I would love, immediately my mind was like, well, it would be great if, they, if the 21 guys become the Men in Black guys. Yeah. You think they could be Agent S&M. That's hilarious to me. Damn. So, I mean, like, there's, there's stuff you could play with. So I'm going to line up, but it all depends on the casting. And I think I, a lot of people I, feel like glad this question tortured you guys as much as it did me. <laughs> Honeymoon, <laughs> Honeymooners Star Trek. A brand new mashup. <laughs> Fantasy Island and TJ Hooker. Let's bring them together. <laughs> the police the car. car. The car. <laughs> Ashley, let's exit night. All right. Soon after news broke that New Line Cinema hired a new screenwriter to work on the long and development adaptation of Neil Gaiman's comic The Sandman, star and director Joseph Gordon-Levitt exited the project citing creative differences. Production was scheduled to take place later this year when Levitt took to his Facebook page to announce his departure. Gordon Levitt explained that when the project moved from Warner Brothers to New Line, he and the studio had different ideas as to how a Sandman movie should be developed. The project is now moving forward with Final Destination 5 and The Conjuring 2 writer Eric Heiserer. No director, star, or release date has been revealed. Mark Byers sell a Sandman movie without Joseph Gordon Levitt. It's a tough question, Ashley. I'm going to buy it without Joseph Gordon Levitt. It's harder for me to buy it with all these other things that are going on because now we don't have a director, we don't have a star. <laughs> We got a guy who wrote Final Destination 5. We we haven't seen The Conjuring 2 yet, so we don't know how that's going to shape up. But it makes me very nervous because this is always one of those properties. Shnep, I know a lot of people ask you on Heroes all the time. It's like, what's a comic book franchise that has not gotten the movie treatment yet that you desperately want to see? Any of these DC Vertigo properties are good material. I think yeah. Sandman might be the best of all of them. And to yeah. see somebody who is as passionate as what he acts in and produces as Joseph Gordon-Levitt is, for him to come in and say, oh, you guys are totally botching this mission now. I'm stepping out. That does make me a little nervous but just having him as the star of Sandman I don't need to see him in this movie in order to get me to buy it so I still think that it could be a very promising project it's got a lot of potential but I am a little nervous about all these other things going on behind the scenes Roka how do you feel uh this is absolutely one of my favorite uh I don't know what do you call it comic book properties ever created like ever I mean it's it's on par with Watchmen and mm -hmm. Kingdom Come and Dark Knight Returns for me it's yeah. almost an untouchable thing and so when it was announced I love Joseph Gordon-Levitt I think he's a great actor and he's obviously shown he can do a lot of different characters different range 50-50 Looper all these kinds of things that are great I wasn't always sold on the fact that he could be Sandman Tom Hiddleston was always in my sure. mind the choice and Cumberbatch as well but obviously he's taken with Doctor Strange so for me I'm buying this because it opens up the possibility that Hiddleston could step in or someone of of a more lanky kind of longer body shape mm. which is what I always felt was great about Dream and now we open the possibility of all these uh, other people coming in to possibly vie for the role. And then New Line has shown they can handle the Lord of the Rings stuff. So they've shown they can handle franchises and properties and make them work. I'm, I'm buying it tentatively just for that possibility. But I am worried how they're going to make these into movies because they're, they're interconnected. They're like short stories within each right. volume. And to me, it always worked better as a as a TV sh as a TV show on HBO or Cinemax, where they could go as far as they wanted to go, or Showtime would have the serial so. killer convention. <laughs> yeah, um, right. I, exactly. I, yeah, yeah I'm, I sadly sell this. I think that this is a botch for uh, for the property. I think not only was uh, Gordon Levitt going to star in it, remember he was going to direct it. Yeah, and he was talking with Gaiman. He loves the property. He's read the comics. I think you had someone, it's like, look, he doesn't look like Morpheus, but that's, I don't care about whether actor looks mm. like the character or not. It's how they perform and whether they're a good actor or not. Mm. Gordon Levitt is a, a great actor. Absolutely. Um, he proved that he knows how to direct with Don John. I was excited to see what he was going to do with the Sandman. And I, and I felt like, I know it sounds weird, but I felt like at least he was going to protect that character and not let it get fucked up. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like hearing 
the writer of Final Destination 5 doesn't put any faith. I feel like, wow, really? Mm. You're going to make a goofy, like, who is he going to be? Like a spook creature? The boogeyman, the salmon. Yeah. They don't understand the property. <laughs> the candy man. The, yeah, he's like, the yeah. candy man, just say salmon. Please. Splash sand in your face. He shows up. It's like, <laughs> I could see a bunch of dumb producers just effing this up. Yeah. And that's why I think Gordon Lev was like, look, dude. I was I was doing this over at Warner Brothers. They they had me. They had my back. Maybe it went to New Line. And they were like, no, no, no. We're gonna go in the horror vein. We wanna we wanna compete against Dimension. I don't even know if Dimension's still Dimension's around. Still around. <laughs> They're still around. Good bunch of weird ghost, creepy kids in a in a little locked closet. Little people knocking on doors and stuff. You know, I'm. I don't want to swear anymore. I'm done talking about. it. <laughs> Could you see the Conjuring two though, and have that change your mind? Could you watch that? And be like, oh well, this guy did write the Conjuring two. If so the Conjuring maybe... two is as scary as the first Conjuring, I love the Conjuring. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a great return to horror. I put a lot of my faith in James Wan. Uh, I know James Wan is directing the second one, so and I have not seen it, so I can't mm -hmm. bag on that writer for the Conjuring two. I did not like Final Destination five. But if he does a great job with a Conjuring 2, I will probably change my mind and look forward to the Sandman. But my gut instinct is that they're changing it yeah. away from what it should be, which is what all of us Sandman readers want, yeah. is that Neil Gaiman adaptation, which you're like, you can have six movies, don't F it up. And I feel like they're gonna F it up. It's it's fascinating to me to see how they how people can consistently mess up these properties that deal with heaven and mm. hell. They're so rich with our own ideas, cultural, cultural ideas, mythology, depending, it doesn't matter where you're from, where you grew up, the idea of heaven and hell in all cultures, in all languages, in all countries, have these interesting characters that populate them. And I think that's what Gaming did a really great job of bringing into the Sandman. Yep. Like they messed up the Constantine TV show. They, the, the Constantine film's okay, but it's not great. And now here we go, here's another situation where they have a potential to really explore these very deep, deep mythology and deep- uh, uh, Baroka, uh, can't we have like a little floating baby in <laughs> yeah. there? Where are the jump scares? It's the Sandman. Hey, Get you know, out of here. Just, you bring up the concept of heaven, of hell, of death. Ashley Moe Demons. was one year closer to it because it's her birthday. <laughs> Happy today. birthday, Ashley. Sandman. We have Sandman. one more buy or sell. What is it? All right. <laughs> Deadline is reporting that Paramount and MGM have hired Big Bad Wolves director Aaron Cashales and Navat Papushado to direct Bruce Willis in a new remake of Death Wish, the 1974 movie about a mild mannered architect who decides to take vengeance on the street punks who raped and murdered his wife and daughter. A Team and the great director Joe Carnahan was originally supposed to direct, having penned the original script but left the project some time ago. A new draft of the script has now been completed by writers Dan Gilroy and Graham Yost, with production slated to begin this summer. Schnapp Byers saw a Death Wish remake with Bruce Willis. I'm, you know, I'm going to buy this. Uh, you know, even though, you know, all the rumors, everything you always hear about Bruce Willis being hard to work with, he's a basic a jerk on set, whatever. If you give him the right property, and I think this is the right property, just like Charles Bronson was kind of like hitting his limit. People were like, why are we the watermelon man? We're we gonna get that guy again. What's a he was in that once upon a time and what what are you what are you doing with that Bronson dude? Then bam, Death Wish. He's a badass. You already have Bruce Willis already has that with Die Hard. No one's gonna you can forget about everything else. And even that picture from Looper, he was great in Looper. He's been mm -hmm. in so many great films. He's a great action lead. I think given the right property, him being in Death Wish, I could see that and I'll buy it. Yeah, I'll buy it because I'm I'm just going to believe in Bruce Willis. I know bald Bruce Willis isn't nearly as productive as Bruce Willis with that hair that he used to have. He's never going to have Charles Bronson's head of hair from 1974. They made like four Death Wish movies, I think. Yes. And Charles Bronson, he's just a badass. He just had that look. Bruce Willis can be that guy if they do it right. I'm more concerned. I'm less concerned with the star as I am with what's the tone of this movie going to be. You want to recapture that first Death Wish where this thing can get so fantastical and comic booky and and action. You know, London has fallen. Like when mm -hmm. I want it to be dark darker, grittier, a little bit smaller of a movie. I think if you do it like that and you treat the source material with respect, because that first Death Wish, man, it's a pretty fascinating psychological mm -hmm. experiment it's to watch awesome. on yep. top of all the shooting that's going on. So I'll give it a buy for right now. Roca? Yeah, I give it a buy for right now, although I initially sold it because Joe Carnahan is one of my favorite underground quiet directors sure. working, making fantastic films that people aren't going in mass to go right. see, which is a shame. Mm -hmm. The Grey is one of my favorite films, bar Grey none. It's such an interesting exploration of what men confront when they come to a place where they've lost all hope mm -hmm. and how they have to go back to their primal urges or instincts to reclaim their place in their world. And I, it's funny, to, it's narc is almost the same way, that kind of exploration. So I was hoping to see that with Death Wish because the original Death Wish, 
is a such a good film mm -hmm. and it brings up a lot of uncomfortable subjects i mean he's a liberal who goes conservative because and becomes a huge gun person because of the, the rape and the death of his wife and daughter willis is known to be a conservative in hollywood so it makes sense to cast him to see that to how he can bring those that stuff into this now i'm buying because of the directors those two directors the israeli directors are fantastic big bad wolves is one of the most unsettling films i've mm -hmm. ever seen about revenge or about justice it's it was kind of like my dream to see a film like that because that, that doesn't usually get through the american censors oh, to make a film like that and it's so good um so i'm buying because of those two directors i don't know how they're going to make willis look like the thing that was great about death wish with charles bronson was charles bronson was like passing middle age right so he had the kind of dumpy kind of like guy you you could take advantage of you could see getting taken advantage of so i don't know how willis is going to play that because he's always such a badass i'm glad you brought that up they they need to maintain like you guys both said that that original death wish and i think willis is an actor he can do this kind yeah. of stuff he, he's not a horrible actor no no of he course can, like grow his hair out a little bit look a little frumpier I don't know you know grow his hair out. well the hairs <laughs> they can, they can give him, him hair yeah, he can have hairs added but uh yeah i think he could he could play this role amazingly well I'm with you as far as the tone. I want it to be like Death Wish, mm -hmm. not Dash with Death Wish three or four. <laughs> yeah, right. That were basically had those weird like punk rock. Let's kill them all. Yeah, like, right. like cr crazy canon films. It's not, films, it's not you know? supposed yeah. to be revenge porn. Yeah, it's, it's like, not. It's yeah. supposed to be about exploring what what makes you change because a personal tragedy happened to you yeah. and what that exploration is like and the struggles you have with it as you're making that. Yeah, change. it's very. It's, it's it's a little bit like The Punisher, except instead mm -hmm. of like a badass like Frank Castle, you have a guy like Michael Douglas and falling down where right. he just loses his last marble and it's go time so you heard it here first we all have a death wish here at Collider and also Movie Talk. don't make it too much like Taken I don't want him yeah. to be like I've got a special set of skills yeah. I don't want it it's got to be a normal guy mm -hmm. pushed over the edge just like falling down well Carnahan yeah. worked well with Liam Neeson maybe he wanted Liam Neeson to be in this role and they're like oh, no wow. Liam Neeson no Carnahan wow. so we'll see uh, we do know that it is the end of buy or sell and now it is time for mailbag if you guys want to get your question read on the air all you have to do is email us at collidervideo at gmail.com Com. Send in your question anytime, day or night. Try to be sober when you do it. And at the end of this show, we're going to take some time for your live Twitter questions. So if you're watching us right now, and thousands upon thousands of you are, now I'm nervous, tweet us at Collider Video. Ashley Mova is going to be the gatekeeper, so make sure you have a lot of good birthday cake emojis in the tweet, and she'll probably get it on air. Ashley, what's up first in our mailbag? All right. Mark Devlin writes, Sup, guys? I saw on the show not too long ago that someone asked what your expectations were for the upcoming Assassin's Creed film. So my question for you is, what are your expectations for the upcoming Doctor Strange movie? With Cumberbatch in the lead role and a fresh new Marvel origin story, should we be setting the bar high? Even though we haven't seen him on the screen before, I think we should be setting our expectations relatively high. Thanks. I think your expectations should be sky high for Doctor Strange. And Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange is the least of the reasons why I think that. I think Cumberbatch is great. He's going to make a fantastic Doctor Strange. But is this source material directed by a guy guy like Scott Derrickson bringing his vision, his horror background to what this story is going to be and how it ties into the greater MCU is what I'm most looking forward to. And it's not just a one man show. Cumberbatch is going to be fine as Doctor Strange, but you have so many stars supporting him in this movie. I can't wait to see what Tilda Swinton is like yeah. in this movie. There's so many other things to be excited about. And on top of that, yes, is Cumberbatch <clears throat> as Doctor Strange. I, this is one of my most anticipated movies of the year so far. It might be the best comic book film we see I mean it's got a tough bar to beat getting over Deadpool and X-Men and Batman v Superman and Civil War and all these other things but if there's something that can come in and be that underdog it's going to be Doctor Strange snap yeah it's definitely it's the dark horse from my for myself being a Doctor Strange fan it's a dream come true yeah. and then just with the casting it's like wow I would never thought that they get the, that level of acting talent to all be in one movie Tilda Swinton she would tell Edgy of Four mm -hmm. yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch I mean the list goes on I mean who else is in it Rachel I mean, McAdams Mads Mikkelsen Mads I mean Mikkelsen. come on it's it's ridiculous so yeah. it's almost like you're gonna go in there how I went in with Deadpool is like uh, I've got high expectations really high expectations I hope it doesn't fail me I don't think it's gonna fail me I think they're everything that I've read about it so far everything that I've seen so far feels like they're really sticking really true to the story of Doctor Strange, which is really a great thing. If you don't know about Doctor Strange, check out a Marvel comic, get on it, yeah. read up on this character. He's a really cool, interesting character, different enough from all the other superheroes that it makes it fresh and refreshing. And to see Marvel jump into this trans-dimensional world, that's what I'm most excited about. And let's be fair, we're not even getting our expectations for the movie ready yet. We just want to see yeah. a teaser. We want to see something. We All we've seen is some concept yeah. art and maybe like a you Couple know TMZ pictures. image of Benedict Cumberbatch wearing a 
tape checking something on a cell phone. So we don't know <laughs> how excited to get until we see some sort of teaser, right? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm totally excited for this uh, because of the casting. Again, I mean, what, what John already brought up, I'm so excited to see that. But also we've seen, you know, we've seen them use the blueprint for making these out of mainstream characters work in comic book movies. There's blueprint on the screen of Deadpool, Guardians of the Galaxy. There's possibilities here to explore. And I think right. with Doctor Strange, I'm with John, also one of my favorite comic book characters. You know, the out of the mainstream characters have seemed to have so much more depth and richer lives because it seems like the, the Marvel or DC leaves them alone, the creators alone, to kind of mine what they can mine because they understand it's kind of a niche or niche property. So, and I think, and I think with Doctor Strange, there's certainly so much more that they can enjoy and explore and flesh out that it'll be fun to see with this cast because they're all such proven actors who are capable of portraying actors, or I mean characters with a lot of depth. And so it's 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 going to be. I'm excited, super excited. Here's a question: Will they unleash the mindless ones? <laughs> right, because that's what I want to see. Yeah. All right. Well, let's unleash the mindless ones here on Collider. What's the next mailbag question? <laughs> Tim Moore writes: Hey guys, loving the show. Question: If you personally were to write and direct a film, what type of film would it be? Thanks for taking my question. Uh, that is actually not a mindless question at all. That's a great concept, and it's something I've never really wanted to do. Is like making a film. It just seems so hard. It just seems like you're taking a lot of ad films. <laughs> Day in and day out. You got all this stuff to worry about. There's crew, there's actors that are probably going to be bitching on set all the time. It's just a whole, I like seeing movies and that's about it. If I, if I was going to do something, it would be a <laughs> horror comedy, a very small horror comedy. I like the woods as a setting because you don't have to deal with people. You don't have to worry about cell phones. There's no reception out there. Let's just go camping in a tent, crack some jokes, somebody gets stabbed, and that's the end of the movie. Right? No? Nobody wants to see that? Sure. All totally. right, Schnapp, pitch us a movie. All right. Well, you know we're still working on Aunt May. It's a <laughs> Super May Day. Oh, yeah. Super. I am excited about that one. Yeah, so. it's got a lot yeah. of subtitles. We're Super gonna, May We're going to add a few more subtitles. We'll be announcing all the subtitles probably next week. And I think we, we'll be filming a couple of our script meetings. You'll see that on Collider. I think. I think it should be Aunt May, and then the tagline of the poster should be, dishes are done. Yeah. She's putting down a dish like yeah. she's Susie Homing. She's picking up like a pistol or Yeah, something. but there's a spider on the dish. She's screaming, ah! You gotta get Betty White. This whole, you, can't, you will not believe the all star cast we're gonna get. So, uh, as far as uh, making films, I'm actually making two proof of concepts in June. One is a horror movie, and one's a science fiction film. Uh, a, a company is offered to give me money to shoot trailers for these to raise the funds. Ooh, nice. uh, so, yeah, one is a, uh, a hard R horror film, the other is a, a probably PG 13 science fiction film, is what I can guess from the, the scripts that I wrote. So, um, that's what I'm developing, and you know, I've I've worked in television mostly, done a feature film as a documentary. There's a couple of things I'd like to try as a feature film, but I, I really fall into those genres. I've written comedy scripts, science fiction scripts, and horror scripts, and that's my wheelhouse, and that's kind of what I like doing. So. That's what I'm going to keep doing. That's exciting. Well, breaking news here. It's either 1.30 or 2 p.m. We have uh, John Roca's auditioning to play Hobgoblin in the <laughs> movie. That's Let's right. See how that goes. We're going to make uh, him dress up as we've got the Hobgoblin outfit. Regardless of that, Roca, if you're going to write and direct a film, what kind of uh, flick are you making? <laughs> Burning pumpkins! Uh, okay, so my, my, my thing would be, uh, I've been such a huge fan of this author since probably the early 90s, uh, and actually had a couple of email exchanges with him about trying to buy the rights for this book. It's called Flood. The author's name is Andrew Vacus. Mm. He writes a lot of underground, gritty New York uh, um, uh, stories and their main character his name is Burke and he's basic he was a guy who was shuffled through the foster system was abused ended up in prison became friends with these uh, kind of low-level criminals and what they do is they go and chase down uh, child predators uh, people who run prostitution rings child prostitution rings this really gritty underbelly stuff and he, uh, he's oh and he's in love with this woman wolf and wolf is a woman who prosecutes this stuff in the New York uh, prosecutors uh, uh, or you know what call it new york attorney right what, what do they call that what do they call it's it? a lot of big words strung together it's like some sort yeah. of new york prosecution district yeah. of attorney that kind of thing. Situation. yeah so Le it, legal people right <laughs> and in real life andrew is married to the right. woman who does that and so his books are so dense with interesting characters with fascinating storylines and they have that grit mm -hmm. and i'm just a big fan of gritty stuff and so that would be the first thing if i could option it i would option it direct it cast it would not put myself in it and 
and uh, give it a shot to see if this quiet underground film, kind of like Joe Carnahan's stuff, could work. Sure. So that's 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 my answer. What does Roka love for breakfast? Grits. If we could get those <laughs> low-life criminals to find out whoever stole my backpack last night, hey! that'd be fantastic. No. Let's get it on. I need some good news now, Ashley. What's the last mailbag right. question? Martin Johnson writes, Hi, guys. Love the show and can't wait till the Schmoes show is finally back. I just got a quick question around the podcast. I've noticed that there seems to be quite a few shows or episodes that appear on YouTube that aren't uploaded to iTunes as podcasts. For example, Sunday's Mailbag Show. I was wondering if these are oversights or if it is intended. I'm sure the Mailbag Show used to be uploaded as a podcast. It would be funny if it was like Sunday night. We're like, oh, God damn it. We haven't been making any of the mailbags on <laughs> iTunes for like months. It is not an oversight. We trust you. The monkeys here working behind the scenes are very diligent in what we put on iTunes, what we put on YouTube. So we want to show you guys yes you can always get movie talk you might be listening to my golden voice right now on itunes as well as heroes and jedi council we don't put mailbags up there we don't put some of the other recap shows up there just yet as well spoiler reviews simply because look kids grown-ups have a thing called money to quote homer simpson and it just doesn't financially make sense to be able to put all this stuff up on itunes just yet now that's not to say it's not going to happen sometime down the road in the future we have a great relationship with a lot of people over at itunes and doing podcasts and uploading that kind of stuff it could happen some Someday, if you guys want it, make sure you let us know. Now, in the meantime, at the top of that question, you did reference the Schmoes No Live Show, Phase 6, coming back this Thursday. That is definitely going to be uploaded as a podcast to our RSS feed. And every week, you guys are going to get it. I am so excited to announce that we are back. Well, I guess you guys already knew that, but it is going to happen this Thursday, 7 to 9 p.m. PST. It's going to be a hell of a show. We're so happy to be back. I'm actually looking at the new set right now, and um, it's good. It's real good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, now it's time for live <laughs> Twitter questions, ladies and gentlemen. Tweet Ashley and let her know that it's her birthday and she looks very, very lovely Aww. as she usually does. What is that was first? That's so nice. I'm actually pretty Twitter shocked that you were nice sphere. to me. Like, I'm always, I am always you nice. Are, you are, you are. I am just a nice kidding. guy behind the scenes. Occasionally I get a little douchey, but that's only when somebody steals my backpack because my Air Jordans Aww. were in there. Damn. Oh, wow. Okay. They that's were British horrible. Knights. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, Andy Q writes, Mark, I stole your backpack. No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> Hero. Oh, Hero, what are some awkward movie theater experiences that you've had? Oh, wow. man. I've, I, I've got too many to name. I'll, I'll list off two of them right off the bat. Okay. Um, my big thing is when people come into a theater and they're talking while the movie is on. Oh, yeah. Like, they, they've just literally snuck in. And I was seeing The Witch just this, this mm. past weekend with Holly. It's the middle of the movie. If you know The Witch, it's not a lot of music. It's not a lot of incidental sound effects. Mm -hmm. It's in fact very quiet. Yeah. And you're like, it's very, it's very tonal and it builds up this tension. And then I had like four people, ah, like laughing oh. and yelling, <laughs> walking down the hallway. And I instantly, normally, I don't, I'm not as proactive, but nowadays I just got up and met them at the right as they're coming into the theater. I was like, hey, what's up, man? Why are you, you know, we're watching a movie. <laughs> Why are you coming and sneaking in? Where are your tickets? They were like, oh, I was like, yeah, that's right. Shut up. <laughs> wow. And they were like, we're sorry. And they didn't say anything. And I felt really good about it because none of the other people in the theater, it was a pretty packed house. We're all trying to enjoy the film. I'm going to be the silencer. I, I've had to do that <laughs> with kids when they're at an R-rated film. I'm like, hey, how'd you get in here? Where's the, where's the parent? And they're because they were yelling, I'll just walk right up and get in their face. I'm like, where are your parents? Oh, uh, oh, uh, that's right, son. Shut up. <laughs> wow. We're all trying to watch this movie. Charles Bronson, ladies and gentlemen. Right? No, <laughs> because it's so disrespectful, and people who don't have the respect. I'm not in your. I'm not in your living room. All of the people in this theater paid money to see this film. Have some respect. If it's a comedy, laugh. If it's a horror film, scream. Otherwise, shut up. You know, Roko, like, you can intimidate be. some fools. Have you ever had to do so in a movie theater? Yes. Um, I had in. in I, I don't do what John does. Uh, I don't actually facially confront them because then. You know, I'll go to jail. Uh, what? Because because I don't do the whole like, okay, are we cool. I go. Like, so what happened was, uh, um, I went to see a movie on a date. I went to see that Tower Heist movie. Oh, Terrible right. Tower Heist movie. So I went to go see that on a date. I'm. It's a second date. Uh, this girl I kind of liked at the time, and so we were exploring with it. So I sat next to this. Oh, this pregnant woman comes in with her husband, and I'm sitting next to them now. It's when you have the railing in front of you, you can put your feet up or stuff. So apparently, and I did not know this, apparently my leg, because it was up, was pushing against the uh, armrest. I had no idea this was happening. So um, like 30 minutes in the film, 40 minutes in the film, they switch seats. So I'm just like watching and I'm like, oh, that's odd, they switch seats. So I put my arm down and apparently my arm crossed over what he 
what the husband thought was the halfway point of the armrest, and he cocked his arm back and yet like elbowed me right in the arm. Whoa! Yikes. Now you all have had experiences with me. The, in that moment, I'm like, I'm gonna toss him forty rows in onto his head and break. He like, but I was like. What? I'm on a date, so I can't do that. Oh, it's so like I Clark was... Cannon, that bar in Superman yeah. too. You can't right. show your power. That's You're not taking your glasses off That's yet, right. Roka. You're Damn like, it. hang on a second. <laughs> so I was like, what the fuck? Really loud uh, in the theater. <laughs> and then we got into it. Because he's like, you've been pushing these against my pregnant wife. and I'm like, she hasn't wow. said anything. She can use her words. Ma'am, were you feeling this way? And she wouldn't say anything. Oh, and I was no. like, why did you hit me? You basically assaulted me here in the movie theater. And people around us like, we're loud as shit while the movie's going the on. The people are like, this is so much better than Tower <laughs> yeah, Rice. Tower Rice, keep going. Uh, uh, and meanwhile, the girl I'm on a date's like this. She's like, John, John, John. And I'm just like, no, no, no. He hit me. He's a, and so uh, eventually they get up and they leave uh, because the wife goes, well, yes, you were pressing. And I go, well, why didn't you say anything? Do you know you can use your words and say, hey, you're pressing against me. You're pregnant. I would have understood and absolutely moved my leg over, but you didn't say anything. You, you sent your husband who then assaulted me. So then they go out and they go and tell the manager. The manager comes in and goes, so I understand that you hit somebody. And I was like, what the Yay. fuck is going on oh. here? So he said, just don't have any other problems. Just sit and watch the movie. I'm, I'm happy to watch the movie. And then they never came back. But so it, how did, it was how, so how did they end up yeah, that night? <laughs> well, we didn't yeah. keep going after that uh, night. So uh, right. once you see the rage, not a lot of people can handle Red Line Roca. So. Uh, Pregnant couple yeah, ruined I mean, your like, date. Yeah, basically. So that, that's why it, I think our point is never have kids. Uh, I have uh, I never had that experience in a movie theater where it was like a full on like fist fight or anything like that or like a bunch of shoving. But I have unleashed furious hell at people to the point where just all the horsemen of the apocalypse just come riding into them. So now I'm just more like a ninja in the theaters because I know it's in there somewhere and I don't want it to come out ever again. So it's like the Hulk. I just come home and I write days without an incident, like 118 or whatever. So now I'm just more like a ninja to where if I sit down, and you can ask Christian about this too, we see a lot of movies together. I let him know before the movie starts. I'm like, dude, I'm just sitting around people. I'm a flight risk. And what that means is that I will leave. I will get up and I will just walk around to go sit somewhere else. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm right. quick. Absolutely. You, you'll never see me coming until it's too late. I'll come there and I'll sit in the corner and enjoy the movie. I just want silence. I just want you to shut up. Don't put your feet up. Don't do yep. anything. Don't turn off your cell phone. Just please shut up. It's a movie theater. It's the last place we can get it done. Let me add Thank one you. other thing. Also, if you're in an empty movie theater, don't go sit next to the only person that's in it. <laughs> that's happened to me a couple of times. Like I'm, I, went, I remember seeing the Punisher War Zone, and it's like literally me and an old lady. We're like, it was, no one went to see this film. I was like, I'm seeing this movie. It was a matinee or whatever. I'm in New York. I'm like checking this out. And some weird dude get, comes into the theater and sits right next to me <laughs> in an empty theater. I'm like, and I just like, if you're him, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I gave him the death eye. And he's like, oh, got up and like went to the other side. I didn't even have to say anything. I think I did say, are you kidding me? That's the one thing I said. Oh, that's hilarious. Me? Yeah. I was like, live it. Yeah. So, oh, and right, so don't, don't be a kick, weirdo when you go to the movies. And Just don't be normal. Kick, don't kick the back of chairs. Yeah. Don't kick the back of chairs. Yeah. Nothing the, drives me more And chew insane. with your mouth closed. What are you, some kind of an point animal? Here is just don't go to the movies with us. Yeah, we're honestly, a bunch of you guys are so yeah. friendly. We've got a lot of old things, a lot of lists. We just want our experience. Yeah. <laughs> Ashley, so it's not this birthday, but sometime you're going to have a birthday and you're going to be as crabby and as old. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I hope right. I never see a movie with you guys. Me and cuisines every Come on, you saw Transformers 4 with us and you liked it. I'm sure. I'm sure that you. You enjoyed that too. <laughs> what's, right. uh, what's up next? Frankie writes, in which movie slash franchise would you like to play at least a little role or be in tr be a part of in general? Oh man, I mean, look, I'm I'm very Oof. upfront about the fact I never want to be in a Star Wars movie. They're my favorite movies of all time, and I do not want to be the guy. I don't want to be the two <laughs> fighters against the Star Destroyer. Like I don't want to be that guy and have everybody laugh at me for how I ruined a movie potentially. So don't let me be that guy. Uh, a Marvel movie, I think I could handle. A you know you know who I want to be? I want to get killed by a great white shark. That's what I want to do. I want it, I want that to happen in real life. That's how I want to go out. And I want that to happen in a movie. So if there's a movie out there, I'll settle for that huge thing in Jurassic World. Like, I'll get killed by one of those. If I could get killed by a dinosaur or a great white shark, I'm happy to do it. I will settle for, like, a lion on the Serengeti, but I prefer to be mauled by either a dinosaur or a great white shark. Mark, you were already in Force Awakens I was in the Conja Club. <laughs> yeah, the right, guys? Club, it was you. Can't, you're not going to be you, able to escape that one so easily. How did you do that accent? Like, how, yeah, how, how did you, you study like, that Han Solo. I I'm part of the Conja Club. Wasn't Look, it like that? You guys should know I was close. too busy shooting this season of Walking Dead to be <laughs> right. in The Force Awakens. Hey, uh, 
you know, I'll be in any anybody's movie. I'm a slut. So you want me to get my <laughs> head we go. cut off, shoot there me in the face, go. throw me off a bridge, whatever. <laughs> I've done a bunch of cameos for director friends of mine, and that's always a fun thing. I'm not really, I used to act. I'm not into pushing myself as an actor anymore, but it's, it's a fun thing. Acting is really fun. If you get a chance to do it, I, any chance I get to do it, I'm like, yeah, I'm on set. What time did you say? Four in the morning? I'm there, son. What? Am I wearing a weird, crazy rubber monster outfit? Done. Hopefully, I'm a Klingon soon. I was I'll be already a, wearing it. I know. I was, I'm ready to be a Klingon. Let's do it. So, Roka. Transformers. I would love to be in one of those terrible Transformers movies just to yell something stupid as a Transformers going on top of me or coming oh, around awesome. me. Because I love, I love the Stanley Tucci, John Voight, these weird, very established actors end up in these films. Seeing Laura Linney in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies is still blowing my damn mind when I see that. So I would love to be part of something ridiculous like that just to get the chance to say some crazy lines and have fun saying them. That's hilarious. Now, having said all the stuff that I just said this weekend I am actually beginning shooting my scenes on a movie it's an independent feature called the players and uh, very excited about it you can contribute to their campaign on my Twitter page Ashley let's do one more question. are you gonna be a player in a movie uh, like a player yeah. for real I'm, I'm, in a, I'm not gonna be a player in a movie no I'm no. gonna be in the film as definitely not a player. Oh, okay, that's, that's good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Damn. Ryan Howe writes. Right. She cast an aspersion. <laughs> no, a little side She has not there. met your girlfriend. <laughs> that right. woman is good. He, Brian Howe writes Which non comedic actor has the best comedic timing slash chops? Which non comedic actor? So it's somebody that hasn't come from like an improv sketch or a stand up background, or we just don't primarily know them for that. I mean, look, there's ones that have started out in comedy, and then you kind of forget that they have this great comic background. Mm -hmm. The one that comes to mind, the two that come to mind are Michael Keaton and Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks for right. me, is that they, you forget what a comic force they used to be, and they still have that somewhere inside them. Right. So those are the two guys that I would go with. Uh, you know who actually really impressed me, and it was, it was at the Oscars, and it was, you know, so overshadowed by all the other cool stuff that happened at the Oscars that night when Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe oh, yeah. came on to present an award and it's you know they're paired together because they're promoting the nice guys which comes out this summer that movie sold itself a lot it really yeah. did it adjudicated itself very nicely with their chemistry because I don't consider Russell Crowe or Ryan Gosling to be comedic actors they were hysterical that night they were really funny in the trailer and I can't wait to see what Shane Black does with those well, two that's gentlemen. got that whole flavor of kiss kiss bang bang the mm -hmm. two you know so I, yeah I'm really excited about the nice guys I'll say Matt Damon because not only did his comedy The oh. Martian win <laughs> Uh, for best comedy <laughs> in Golden Globes, but that man is funny. He's cutting cracks and jokes and stuff. I never knew he had that kind of comedic timing until I saw that amazing comedy called The Martian. You're going to have to let that go. Nope. Roka? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's brilliant. Um, I, I know this is a movie talk, but I kind of have to say Andre Brower. If you aren't watching how funny he is on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, mm. I don't know what to tell you. That guy was homicide for years, and that guy has always played these dramatic actors. To see him play a gay captain of a police precinct and have these have go to toe with uh, with Jake Peralta, who's Andy Samberg. It's fantastic. So I would love to see him do that in the movies. And I give I think Denzel deserves a shot at a comedy. Denzel has little quiet comedy yeah. moments in every film he does. He has these little lighthearted moments, even in the most violent films. Right. He has these lighthearted moments, and those are th that shows you that he has an instinct for it. So I'd love to see Denzel. Yeah, he made me comedy. laugh in Training Day. Uh, yeah, I'm serious. There no, he does. Little, he has little, little side comments. Oh, yeah. yeah, like Ashley. Ashley has those little side comments. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley doesn't have side comments. She will go right at you, full frontal, with yeah, a lot of well. language, nothing else. Well, that's all of our time here on Collider Movie Talk. A couple announcements, kids. The Schmoes No Movie Show Live, Phase 6. It's coming back this Thursday, 7 p.m. PST. That's 10 on the East Coast. Just go ahead and call in sick to work the next day. It's going to be such a party. You're not going to want to get out of bed the next morning. Thank you guys for tuning in in advance. You can catch that on the Schmoes No YouTube channel. On the Collider YouTube channel coming up, we have the Movie Trivia Schmoes. Down. We can officially announce that the launch date is March 25th. That's going to be the first matchup right here. It's going to be John Campia versus Dan Merle from Screen Junkies. What a gargantuan matchup of behemoths that is going to be. And speaking of future matchups in the Ultimate Showdown, each one of these gentlemen has called somebody out on this very show just to get into the uh, contest. I know you're yeah. angry at Finstock. I know you want a piece of Scott Mance. There's a lot of excitement to be had, and we cannot wait to get kicked off very, very soon. Now, with all that being said, we want to once again give our shout out to Ray.
Ray and his family and wishing them all the best. Thanks to everybody who worked so hard behind the scenes. Mark Riley, Dennis Zhang, Adam, Jonathan, who's actually the DMV right now, Wendy <laughs> Lee, everybody <laughs> hanging out there in the back. And a special thanks to the crew who sat with me today and talked about beating people up at a movie theater. First of all, John Schnepp, where can the kids find you? You guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp. Check out my Kickstarter, Sweaties Unite, contribute to making this comic book culture film. Uh, and I'll see you guys later. John Roca, thanks for hanging out with us hey, today, Thanks man. for having me great on. I had a really great time. It's always fun to sit with you guys and with Ashley, of course. Yeah. It's always good to see her. Um, you, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at the Roca Says. And I got one thing to say. Mark just talked about the Schmodown. Oh, it's getting real. The Schmodown is happening. And for some reason, they've chosen Campia and Merle as their first contest, which makes no sense. The outlaw goes first versus the sheriff. If you watched movie fights last week, you saw I already took a piece out of the sheriff's ass. So I'm waiting to take the rest of him when we do the schmodown. It's ridiculous to me. I should be the headline match against Mance. JC, John Campia, you know why they call him JC? <laughs> Jesus Christ, he's going to be sacrificed by Merle on the cross oh in the schmodown. Who wants God. to watch that? We going to watch me going against Mance. That's what should happen. For God's sakes, bring it. Bring it, Sheriff. If, uh, Bring if it. you're in a movie theater and you're sitting next to this guy, just let him have the armrest. Yeah. Just let him have the Whatever armrest. you do, don't touch him, is what I would do. Ashley, don't, don't kick my chair. Kids, fine. And happy birthday. Thank yeah. you. Happy I feel like I'm on an episode birthday. of WWE today. <laughs> Mr. Sandman. You guys Bring can find me, me on Twitter and on Instagram at Ashley Mova. Happy Monday, guys. Make sure you guys go to amctheaters.com for all your latest Showtime information. Get tickets to see movies there. And check out Collider.com. There's lots of great stories, including all that cool Civil War stuff we look to at the top of the show and the Collider YouTube channel. Subscribe there. Subscribe to Schmoes No. With all that being said, my name is Mark Ellis. I'll be in Los Angeles this weekend at the World Famous Comedy Store telling some jokes. You can get tickets at markellislive.com. See you tomorrow. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.